Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Success is predictable. So is failure. Both of them are results of law. Either you know the laws or you don't. So let's talk first of all about leadership. Every human being was born to be a leader. Most of them will die as followers. And that's because they've never been told how to become that leader. I want to begin with a statement. Here's a picture of some sheep. Sheep are the dumbest animals on earth. They are the only animals on earth that don't have a leader. If you study a flock of sheep, you will never see a leader. There's no such thing as a leading sheep. This is why sheep are dumb. They just follow what's in front of them. And this is why they fall over cliffs, fall into rivers, fall off mountains. This is why they are the only animals God created that need a shepherd. Every other animal doesn't need a human. Sheep do. Sheep are dumb. If someone calls you a sheep, that is not a compliment. Some of you wonder why God says you are like sheep. That is not a compliment. God says you are all like sheep gone astray. You are lost. You don't know where you're going, he says. You've walked away from my laws and my principles. You are wandering like sheep. He said, but I came as the shepherd to guide you back to where you fell from. Not to remain sheep, because sheep are always dumb, and God doesn't want you to be dumb. Here's a statement I want you to think about. An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions if they are led by a sheep. Comprende? Verstehen? Let me say it again. An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions if they are led by a sheep. What does this parable mean? It means that leadership determines everything. In other words, leadership determines the quality of the followers. Leadership also determines the mentality of the followers. Leadership determines the morality of the followers. Leadership determines also the attitude of the followers. Leadership determines the commitment of the followers. Leadership determines the destiny of the followers. You can only be as good as your leader if your leader stops growing, you will stop growing. If your leader stops expanding, the organization will stop expanding. You cannot live beyond your leader. Jesus said these words. If the blind lead, listen to his words. I quote Jesus. If the blind lead, then the followers must be blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in to the ditch. He's talking about your destiny. He's telling us, first of all, that you can be in leadership and be blind. You can have a title, a position, power, an authority, and yet be blind. 
Don't ever be convinced by people in high positions. It doesn't mean they know where they're going. Some of you are wondering about the world leaders today. I worked with them personally. I'm talking about heads of state personally in a room, talking to them, and I am shocked at their ignorance. They are blind, and we depend on them to lead our countries, our communities, our organizations, and our economies. And Jesus said, wherever they are going, you will go. They both fall into the ditch. So it's important for you to question your leaders. Don't ask your leader if he has power or authority or money or strength. Ask him, do you have vision? Where are you going? Why should I follow you? What is the destination? Some of you are so emotional, you forget to be sensible. We get excited about people who work miracles who have no destination. We get excited about good preachers who have no destination. We get excited about people who do miraculous things but have no destiny. And they are leading you into an emotional ditch. Leadership is the most important activity on earth because it determines the destiny of the followers. And this is why I focus on leadership so much. Leadership is powerful. Write this down. Leaders provide confidence in people who are frightened. Leadership provides certainty where people are vacillating. Leaders also provide action where people are hesitant. You know, when the turn of Israel came to the, to the Reed Sea, they began to become depressed. Everybody was afraid. And, and a leader emerged, Moses. He stood up on a rock and he stopped the hesitation. He said, I promise you today that the people coming behind us will be dead at sunset. He took action. And then he ran behind the bush and said to God, did you hear what I told them? <laughs> Leaders normally pronounce things they can't do. Write that down. True leaders always speak what makes them dependent on God. It's important for you to do that. Proclaim things. God will perform it. Don't wait for the performance. Put pressure on God. Number four, leaders give strength where there is weakness. They give expertise where there is floundering. Leaders give courage where people are cowardly. They stir up people to believe. Like Moses told the people, stand up and be strong. Every one of Pharaoh's army will be killed tomorrow. He gave them courage. Leaders also provide optimism where there is cynicism. Leaders provide conviction that the future is possible. But the Tom came to me this morning, a few moments ago, and he said, you know, <laughs> we still have our budget to meet in this conference. And I, I'm not surprised that he said that. Most leaders have no money. They have vision. They depend on God to meet the need in the process. And that's why God brought you here. He, this man has conviction. And he believed that this convocation was possible. So he booked the hotel for every room before the people registered. That's conviction. And the hotel signed an agreement with Tom and said, for every room that's not filled, you will have to pay for it. He signed it hoping that you would come. That's leadership. And all of us must act that way. It's called faith. Faith means to believe in something that you can't see yet. And you are so convicted in it that you act. Number nine, leaders create commitment in other people to pursue strategy and success. 
In other words, a leader, a man and a woman, can motivate people to commit themselves to the future that hasn't arrived yet and encourage them to give their energy to a strategy and a program. This is leadership. I influence over 15,000 leaders all over the world in our network, and it grows every day. Millions of people look to me for direction, so I keep close to God, because I need to give directions. Because I have to give them strategy, a program to create the future. Write this down. Leaders design the future. I want you to think about why you were born. You were born to change the world. The present state of the world is not what God wants. He doesn't want you to complain. He wants you to comply to his will. He doesn't want you to be depressed. He wants you to sit down and design the future of your community. And so remember this, a leader finally gives hope and faith. Hope is giving people a reason to believe in the temporary. Everything that you're going through is temporary and a leader makes you believe that. That what you are experiencing is not permanent. You are on your way to a better place. This is leadership. I come to you this morning to tell you that 2014 will be a better year for you. If you believe that, clap your hands and thank God now. That's faith. That's faith. There are two animals on earth that God identified himself with. As a matter of fact, the only two that he identified with and stated it. The first one is the lion. The second one is the eagle. These are two important animals. And why did God identify himself with them? First, because he created them. Secondly, because he knows he put in them leadership qualities, just like him. So God identifies with leadership. The lion is the leader of the animal kingdom. The eagle is the leader of the bird kingdom. Both of them are leaders. And God says, I am like an eagle, and I will take you on my pinions. I will stir your nest like an eagle stirs a nest. I will take you up on my feathers. I am like an eagle. And then God says, I am like the lion. Matter of fact, my son Jesus Christ is not the dog of Judah. He's not the bird of Judah. He is what? The lion of Judah. See, he's the lion of Judah. Jesus says, I am like a lion. I want to talk about the lion for a moment because the lion is a contradiction of leadership. I learned from the lion what I am today. First of all, the lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the strongest animal in the jungle. He is not the most powerful. He is not the most intelligent animal. And yet the lion is the leader. Tell your neighbor there's hope for you. <laughs> the lion cancels every excuse you had for not becoming a leader. The lion cancels the belief that you need to be strong, intelligent, big, tall, powerful. He cancels all. Most of the animals in the jungle are bigger than the lion, more powerful than the lion, stronger than the lion, and more intelligent. And yet, when the lion shows up, everybody's nervous. So, obviously the lion teaches us 
That strength doesn't make you a leader. Power doesn't make you a leader. Intelligence does not make you a leader. So the question is, what makes the lion the leader? I discovered from my research one simple word. Attitude. Write it down. Everybody say attitude. attitude. Say it loud. Attitude. Say it louder. Attitude. You are exactly what you are because of your attitude. So the question is, what is attitude and where does it come from? The answer is in one word, belief. Attitude is a product of belief. Whatever you believe creates your attitude. If you are timid, afraid, depressed, sad, if you are nervous, afraid of stepping out, that's because of your belief system. The lion has a belief system that makes him a leader. He believes he can eat an elephant. The elephant is 180 times bigger than the lion, 800 pounds heavier than the lion. He is 190% more intelligent than the lion. The elephant is heavier than the lion. He is taller than the lion. He's more powerful than the lion. And yet the lion doesn't care. Why? His belief system. Belief produces a third thing. Confidence. When a person is confident, it's because of their belief system. They believe in their ability to achieve their assignment. This is why Moses had so much confidence. He believed what God told him in the bush. In the burning bush. He believed it. So when he saw the odds of Egypt, the most powerful civilization on earth at that time, Moses was not afraid. He told Pharaoh, I come to tell you, let the people go. Where did he get this confidence from? His belief. Where did he get his belief from? God. And so his attitude made him a leader. In other words, you are exactly what you believe. You see this photograph? I took it myself. I travel to Africa at least four times a year. And one of my favorite places to go is to a game park. I go to see my cousins. My best friends are lions. That's why I love Jesus. And I love to watch them because they teach me how to run my companies how to be a good pastor, how to make money, how to develop people, how to train young people. The lion teaches me all of that. They teach me how to advise governments, how to be a good consultant. Look at this lion. The elephant is right next to him, and he refuses to move. As a matter of fact, look at his eyes. I wonder what he's thinking. I discovered what he was thinking. The elephant is a powerful tractor, monster, power, strength, weight, intelligence. And the lion looks at all of that power and strength and might, and he thinks one word, one simple word. <laughs> Clap your hands right there. That's the way the lion thinks. The lion simply says, there's lunch. Now imagine what the lion is doing here. He is reducing the elephant to a meal in his mind. That's what leaders do. They look at a problem. They look at a challenge. They look at an obstacle. And the leader thinks, we can handle that. We can do this. We can achieve this. They reduce everything to a meal. God thought that way. God wanted to save the whole world with all of its problems and sin and depression and darkness and sickness and disease. And God says, let's fix it. And he sent not 10,000 people, one. And Jesus, just like the lion, 
looked at the problem of the world. And he simply says, For God so loved the world, <laughs> he sent me. What? Yeah, just me. Why? This is lunch. <laughs> and then he says, As the Father has sent me, so send I you. Your country is a Muslim country. It's a Hindu country. It's an atheistic country. It is an ungodly country. And God says, go back home and have lunch. Yeah. Clap. You have the capacity to change your whole country. Amen. If I tell you my story, some of you saw the photographs of me receiving the Medal of Congressional Honor from the government of Peru. I received honors from over 80 countries, going to nations, impacting the whole country. I just was in Swaziland last week. I was in Botswana, sitting with the king of Swaziland. He changed the whole country from one meeting with me. He made a public announcement. I gave him advice that changed his government process. Can you change a country? Yes, it's lunch. Stop thinking small about yourself. You are a leader. Say it loud. I am a leader. Say it again. I am a Don't go back hoping things change. Make things change. Start right where you are. Because the world is falling apart. And I want to, in this first session, talk a little bit about the world, this elephant that you're facing. I call it the global challenges. And I want you to think about them real quickly. Our world is in trouble. We are in the middle of wars right now, located where you are. On the south, there's Egypt, people in the streets. On the north, there's Syria, people in the streets. On the east, tension, refugees everywhere. And on the west is the Mediterranean Sea, right across from Europe, where there's 40% unemployment. Our world is dying. My friends from Brazil will tell you the tension in Brazil, where the people are arguing over sports being more important than employment. The world is in trouble. And your country is no different. Whether you are from Malaysia, or Africa, or America, your country is in trouble. Let's talk about what's going on. First of all, we have what we call globalization. Globalization is the biggest problem on Earth. It simply means that what happens in other countries will affect yours. Globalization is the destruction of independence and sovereignty. No country is sovereign anymore. And this is why what happens in Washington affects you. What happens in Beijing affects you. What happens in France affects you. What happens in the Middle East affects you. I was talking to my driver when I arrived here 2 a.m. yesterday morning, and the driver said, gas Gasoline in Israel is $8 a gallon US. He said, I am driving for the money, not to live. He said, because of the war, <laughs> the price of oil is affecting everybody. It's globalization. That means that globalization is the interdependence of nations. And that's an elephant. And we who believe in God, who believe in Jesus Christ as our King, especially those who are supposed to be in the Kingdom of God, this is not supposed to affect you. The Bible says, be in the world, but not of the system. Don't miss tonight. I'm going to talk to you about that because it's important to you to know that the Kingdom of God is present now 
I live in it every day. I bought my aircraft in the middle of the crisis. Why? I am in a different country. It's called the kingdom of heaven. And it shall come to you today. It shall come to you today. It shall come to you today. I believe that God doesn't want you to be a victim of the systems. You should be in the world, but not of the world. Am I right? Yes. So the biggest crisis on earth is globalization. I want you to write this down. The world is filled with fear. And people are afraid of the crisis. But here's the good news. Write it down. Crisis creates creativity. And this is where business comes in. The best time to go into business is during a crisis. See? You don't think like a lion. That's your problem. <laughs> crisis produces opportunities. Those who see them become wealthy. So the key to life is to look for crisis. <laughs> crisis produces what? Creativity. The kingdom of heaven is never in crisis. It feeds on crisis. <laughs> if you study Jesus, all of his miracles was a result of a crisis. <laughs> Without a crisis, you don't need a miracle. Oh, you're slow. Tell your neighbor, let's look for some crisis. So we can work some miracles. Clap your hands, all you lions. Moses would be a boring leader if there was no crisis. As a matter of fact, if there was no crisis, we would never know about Moses. If there was no crisis, we would never know about Elijah. If there was no crisis, we would never know about Joshua. If there was no crisis, we would never know about Daniel. What made Daniel famous? Lion Den. What made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego famous? Fiery furnace. No wonder why you ain't famous yet. You ain't had no crisis yet. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm on my way to greatness. When you go home, I promise you, this is the promise, there shall be an elephant at the airport. <laughs> Clap. Clap. Jesus promised us crisis. Let me quote Jesus. All of you who live godly in Christ Jesus shall, I promise you, he says, suffer persecution. There's an elephant. Crisis produces business. I'm going to say it again. Crisis produces business. This is why China is taking over the world. No one understands China. In the Chinese language, come on those in China, there's no word for crisis. Did you know that? There's no word in China, Chinese for crisis. The word that you use in Chinese for crisis is the word opportunity. See, they tell you opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. Say opportunity. Say like the Chinese, opportunity. China is taking over your country because you say you have a crisis. They say you have an opportunity. And their belief, everybody say belief. Their belief creates their attitude. Stop cursing crisis. Welcome them as friends. Go home. Look for the crisis. Because business is... Solving problems. Write it down. Solving problems. You can never go into business if there's no problem existing. Every business solves a problem. Even you pastors don't know that you are in business. You are solving a problem. People are going to hell. That's a problem. <laughs> a 
and you want to what? Solve the problem? That's why you get money. You call it tithes and offerings. They are paying you to keep them out of hell. Be honest. <laughs> they come to that building for you to teach them how to stay out of hell. That's a problem. And you solve it. And the better you solve it, the more money they give. And if you don't solve it, they go to another pastor and see if you can solve it. People change churches because you stop solving their problems. Every business is a problem being solved. Write this down. So kingdom citizens grow in times of crisis. See, that's why God sent you to this conference and he sent me. I traveled 24 hours to get here from my country. Because God knew that you were about to crumble under crisis. You were about to miss the biggest opportunity at home. Go home and start a business. You are not a sheep. You are a lion. Go look for elephants, not for grass. Go ahead, clap right there. <laughs> Write this down. So the secret kingdom keys to success in crisis is crisis. Jesus had 5,000 people with him up north from here in Galilee. They were sitting on the grass. And they spent three days with him. And their lunch ran out. That was a crisis. He didn't tell the disciples, send them home. He simply said, feed them. In other words, this is a great opportunity to prove something. <laughs> and Peter says, Master, we can feed them. Which means that they, they were not broke. Some of y'all think that Jesus was poor. Read the story carefully. Peter said to Jesus, we can feed them. They had enough money to feed 5,000 people. And then they said, but we'd have to go to another town, which is three days walk away. We can buy bread and come back. That's six days. The folks would starve. <laughs> and so Jesus said, what I hope you will say from now on, what do you have? In your hand. Say it. What do you have? Every businessman or woman started their business from something they had in their hand. It was called an idea. Write it down. Write it down. Idea. You always have ideas. Without money, you have ideas. Without people, you have ideas. Without buildings, you have ideas. Ideas are more important than people and buildings and money. Because ideas produce all three of them. What do you have? He says. And they said, all we have is. Wrong answer. But that's the wrong answer. He said, what do you have? They said, all we have is. That's not true. What they should have said is, all we can see is. Write this down. You always have more than you see. If I have a seed in my hand and I ask you, what do you see? Your answer will be what? A seed. But that's the wrong answer. Because in my hand I have a tree. And the tree has fruit. And the fruit has seeds. And the seeds get trees that have fruit. That have seeds with trees that have fruit with seeds with trees that have fruit. Translate that for me please quickly. So in my hand, I don't have a seed, I have a forest clap. God never gives fruit. He gives seed to the sower, not trees. He always gives you more than you can see. So it takes discernment, the entrepreneurial spirit, to see a forest in a seed. 
This is why business begins with an idea. What is the source of crisis? I told you a crisis is important. <laughs> Jesus said, the world's crisis is a result of greed. In the book of Mark chapter 7, verse 22, Jesus is speaking. He says, what causes heartache and pain? He said, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. All of these evils come from where? The inside of a man's heart. Greed. The number one problem on earth today is greed. Poverty does not exist on earth. It does not. It is greed that creates poverty. As a matter of fact, look at Luke 12, verse 15. Jesus said, Watch out. Be careful. Be on your guard against what? All kinds of greed. You people need to study greed, pastors, and preach on it for a year. Notice he says, all what? Kinds of greed. There are all kinds of greed. There are thousands of ways to be greedy. And he says, greed is the cause of poverty. <laughs> a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession, Jesus says. So don't live just to accumulate things. One day, I was in the United States. I was going to speak at a conference in a state called Idaho. It's a state where they grow big farms, cotton, corn. They grow potatoes. And one day, we were driving through the farms, going to a little town for a conference, a retreat. And we drove for two hours. And for two hours, all I saw was potatoes. My country is not that big. I was overwhelmed. And I saw all these potatoes. And then I saw something I couldn't believe. I saw a big tractor, two of them, in the middle of the potato field. And they were digging up the potatoes, throwing them in the air. And they were crushing them. And I was confused. I had just come back from Africa, where I went to villages where people were not able to eat. And here in America, in Idaho, they were crushing millions of potatoes. And I said to my driver, I am confused. What are they doing? He said, they are destroying potatoes. I said, what? I said, but potatoes are one of the highest forms of carbohydrate to give health to the human body. He said, I know. He said, but they are destroying the potatoes because there is too much on the market and the price is going too low. There is no poverty in the world. So I said to him, why don't they rig the potatoes, ship them to countries that need food? He said, no, 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 no. We got to keep the price right. Greed. Some of you think that the devil is evil. God disagrees. Let me quote God. Money is the root. Not the devil, not the devil. Money is the root, not the devil. Every problem in the world, you can take it back to money. For example, why would Russia support Syria? Because Syria is buying weapons from Russia, and Syria got oil money. Russia says, leave them alone. They are good for business. Everybody 
If you're not careful, we'll be controlled, not by the devil, by money. Jesus said, listen to Jesus. He said, there are only two masters on earth. Now, Jesus was an economist. He said, there are only two masters on earth, only two. And he never mentions the devil. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, Satan is not God's competition. Jesus said, there are only two masters on earth. Either love one and hate the other. Or you serve one and despise the other. You can't serve both, he says. And he never mentions the devil. You cannot serve God, watch him now, and money. He didn't say God or the devil. This is why the worst time in any worship service What are you laughing at? I can see the guilt in the church right here, see? Right in the middle of worship. I love you, Lord. Don't touch my money. I'll serve you, Lord. Don't touch my purse. God or money. Greed. I used to be that way. My wife and I were born in a poor country. Today our country is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, the Bahamas. We have the most successful government in our region. We came from nothing as a country. Our per capita in the world is the second highest in the world. We learn how to give as a country. If you eat a seed, you ate a forest. What did I say? Write it down, please. Write it down. <laughs> but if you plant the seed, you secure a future. The Bible calls money mammon. It's material that you can either multiply or consume. There are three people, three types of people in this room. I gotta stop it. <laughs> are you all glad you're here this morning? Yes. Are you learning something? Yes. Tell your neighbor, I'm a lion. If you're a sheep, go sit somewhere else. <laughs> Tell them, or I will eat you. <laughs> Let the lions clap their hands one more time. It's a good morning. It's a good morning. Good morning to eat some elephants, huh? Hallelujah. Jesus said the number one enemy of God is not the devil. It is money. So if you cannot control money, it will control you. And you'll become greedy. You become the part of the problem. I said to you that business is a result of crisis. Business is also the result of God preparing for your promotion. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Sorry. Can I say it again? Yes. Whenever God creates crisis, he is planning to, to promote his own people. 
I'm going to say it one more time. Write it down. Crisis is preparation for promotion in God's kingdom. During this time in the world right now, the church should be positioned for promotion. When the world is in trouble and depressed and confused, that's when the kingdom is supposed to emerge. The demand for my service around the world is the highest it's ever been. Every day, a request from a government comes in my email. I don't have enough days in my life to fulfill the demands they're asking. And they pay me. I am valuable. Crisis produced promotion. Okay, let me prove it before we close. God allows crisis to test your management. Write it down. You know, when there's a problem that you face, God begins to look at you twice as hard. When you face a crisis, God stands up and looks at you. Let me see what she's going to do now. <laughs> Let me see what he's going to do now. Let me see if he, if he will do what he claims he knows. All this singing you've been singing. Let me see if you believe the words. Can I say it again? All these worship songs you've been singing. Let me bring a crisis to see if you believe what you're saying. <laughs> My God can do anything. Okay, good. Here's a crisis. Let's see what you believe. <laughs> My God is strong. Okay, then here's a problem. Let's see how strong you think he is. There are some crises created by men. But there are crises created by God. Crises are designed for promotion. Uh, let me show you this. Genesis 41 verse 32. Some of you remember this story. God gave Pharaoh a dream. Remember the dream? God showed Pharaoh this dream of uh, these cows. And, and these cows, seven were skinny and seven were fat and you know the whole story and uh, <laughs> and Pharaoh called his consultants in and said give me some economic advice explain the dream to me and none of his experts could solve the problem that's how your government is right now every government in the world that I have been to so far cannot explain their problems. And the people they have around them cannot give them good advice. Think about your government right now. Do you know why? Listen carefully, please. I'm talking to you. Because the solution to the problem is in prison. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I am the solution. They haven't found me yet. <laughs> Clap right there. Give God praise right there. It, it, I feel like shouting hallelujah right now. The solution is locked up. It's locked up in your house. And some of you cannot imagine. You can't imagine coming out of prison. I'm becoming prime minister. I mean, you, <laughs> first you got to come out of jail after you keep your time. Then you have to change your reputation from being a prisoner. Then you have to make some new friends. Then you got to leave your country, go to a place where they don't know you. Then you got to make some other new friends. Then you got to hide your name and change your reputation, change your, post, your, 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 your passport. Why? Because the past. God said, no, from prison, prime minister, one day. Come on, clap. I'm going to prophesy right now. Lift your hands. Receive it. I prophesy that 12 months from now, you shall be promoted in a miraculous way and no one can stop it in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout amen. Receive it, right? Amen. 
They told you, you got to go through 10 years of preparation, 10 years of study. God says, no, 10 months. I'm going to make this 10 months. You're going to be the solution to a problem that's going to promote you. Give God a hand for promotion in short order. Read the statement about the crisis. God says, the reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God. In other words, God says there will be economic crisis in Egypt and I'm behind it. <laughs> I'm going to cause a famine. The word famine in the Bible is the same word as economic crisis. God says, I will create an economic crisis. Why? Because I have someone in prison who needs promotion. Give God a hand for promotion. Eh? You got it, Pastor? Yeah. See, he said, look, some of y'all are so confused about what's going on in the world right now. All the oil prices, all the joblessness, all the unemployment, businesses shutting down, companies collapsing, economies turning upside down, governments confused. God said, this is exciting. I'm getting ready to promote my people. Anybody ready for promotion? Uh, let me take a break in a few minutes and you take a few moments in this mountain. I want you to go out, walk outside for a few minutes today and just look up in the heavens and say, God, I'm ready for my promotion. Come on, say it. I'm ready for my promotion. Come on, everybody say it. I am ready for my promotion. Say it again. I am ready. For Come on, tell him, tell him. I'm ready for my promotion. Give God a hand. You will be promoted in crisis. Never curse a crisis. You are not a part of the system. The one who is your father controls the system. It's a setup for your move up. It's a setup for your promotion. Joseph became successful because of a crisis. Moses. I'm supposed to stop at 12.40, right? No, 12.30. Okay, I have to close, y'all. I got to come back and do this some other time. I thought it was 12.40. It's 12.30. I want to thank y'all for listening to me. I love you. Stay where you are, please. Lions are very disciplined. Sheep, get up any time. Sit down, you're a sheep. Wait until you are formally released. Sit down. Lions are very disciplined. That's why they are the leaders. First of all, lions never keep company with any other animal. Leaders choose their company. Secondly, lions mark out their territory. If you see a lion walking around and begins to urinate, be careful. He's telling you where not to come. You are a lion. I want you to, before you leave this mountain, I want you to go home in your mind and walk around the territory and spiritually urinate. (laughs) 
that's mine. Oh, come on, business people. Go back and take territory. I mapped out my whole country, the Bahamas. If you go to the Bahamas right now, Brother Alfie will tell you. My name is the number one influence in the country. People come to our conferences like this. And they come to the airport without visas. And the officer would ask them, why do you come to the Bahamas? And they would say, I come to Miles Monroe Conference. They'd say, no problem. Stop. Let's go. <laughs> it's called territory. <laughs> Give God a hand. You're going to go back and mark out your territory. <laughs> Alliance are so strange. They don't care who was already in the territory. In other words, there's some people in buildings that belong to you. They're coming out. I said they're going to turn it over to you in Jesus' name. There's property that other people are on that God's going to give to you. Just go and mark it out. Just mark it out. Just mark it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the last thing about alliance is this. When a lion sees an elephant, a lion will never attack. When a lion sees an elephant, and he marks the one for lunch, that one, he never attacks. He begins to make a sound. <laughs> Makes this sound. And the sound is on a frequency that travels through the bush. This sound can only be heard by the other lions in that pride. <laughs> See, an elephant is not afraid of one lion because the elephant knows he can destroy him. One stump, a lion can be killed by an elephant. So when an elephant sees a lion alone, he's not afraid. So the lion does not attack. He makes a sound. And it travels. And all the other lions who's supposed to be a part of that group, hears the sound. And they know, hey, someone sees lunch. That's why you couldn't stay away from convocation 2013. <laughs> yes! The lions are together. The elephants are in trouble. Clap right now. The elephants are in trouble. Finally, when they come together, they surround the elephant. And guess who attacks first? The females. Clap. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, women of God. You ain't afraid of nothing. You ain't afraid of nothing. You ain't afraid of nothing. You are women of God. Thank God for women. That's why I married one. That's why you shouldn't marry men if you are a man. Hallelujah. If you want to destroy elephants, brother, marry a woman. Because when the females jump on the elephant, they dig their claws in. They put their teeth in. And they never let go. When a woman gets her hands on an idea, come on ladies, clap a little bit for me.
Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.